have force is equal to minus kx, which is equal to ma. Then you have zero is equal to m. A is the rate of change of velocity, which is rate of change of position. So it's the second derivative of the position function. So you basically get a differential equation, a very uh, easy differential equation. Uh, so second, some x function whose second rate of change as a function of t plus kx is equal to 0. What kind of function can that be? That's a trig function, either a cosine or sine. Some people ask me, like the book has cosine, sometimes I, have, I do it as sine. Is there a difference? And I always say no. The difference is only a phase angle of pi over 2. So you could either choose cosine or sine. So let's say we say x, let x equal a sine of omega t plus phi. Phi is, it, phi is the phase angle. Uh, then derivative of x with respect to t, which is the velocity of the block, is a w cosine and then the derivative of that is going to be the acceleration of the block. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine. You get negative a w squared, and then another w is going to come out. So if we want to know whether this uh, solves our differential equation, we take this and we put it into the equation here. We'll get 0 is equal to m, and then the second derivative is this one, negative a w squared times sine of whatever's in the parentheses, plus the spring constant k times the x, which is a sine of the parentheses. And if you want this to be equal to 0 for all values of time t, if you want a general solution, we could get rid of the sine and then uh, get rid of the a, and then we have here omega is equal to, uh, omega squared is equal to uh, k over m, and therefore omega is square root of k over m. So those videos on the, the simple harmonic motion and the period of motion, those are concentrated on showing the meaning of this, showing whether or not it makes sense or not, and all of that stuff. So now let's deal with, um, more of the equations of motion. Um, so now that we have the omega and then we have the x, let's talk about the kinetic energy and potential energy of the block. The potential energy of the block is equal to half kx squared and uh, that's equal to this thing squared Uh, half k a squared sine squared of whatever's in the parentheses and then the kinetic energy of the block is equal to half mv squared and then that's what that's this one squared right so you have a squared omega squared cosine squared of whatever's in the parentheses so if I add the kinetic energy plus the potential energy if it is non-damping motion then it should be constant, right? Let's try to show that. Potential plus kinetic half k a squared sine squared plus half m a squared. Now, didn't we just show a minute ago that omega was equal to square root of k over m? I can use that fact and then I can square that, okay? So if I square that, I get k over m. And then you have cosine squared of this. Uh, right? So now I have uh, half k a squared, and then the m and the m cancel, and I get half k a squared. I could factor that out. Then what do I have? Sine squared plus cosine squared sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So that means I showed the sum of the two is always equal to a constant. Okay? What is the meaning of this constant? Well, the meaning of that is 
the maximum potential energy that you gave it, right? Somebody uh, pulled the block, let go of it, and then it went back and forth, back and forth. So the amplitude is the maximum amplitude, okay? The maximum displacement that you gave it. And then uh, this is the maximum potential energy. So the sum of the potential and kinetic must always be equal to that constant value. From that, we could also derive another equation So potential energy is equal to half kx squared. Kinetic energy is equal to half mv squared. The sum of the two must be equal to half ka squared. And if they're always equal to that, then the two and the two and two, two cancel. This gives me a general equation for v in terms of x. So mv squared is equal to ka squared minus kx squared. And then V squared is equal to K over M. And then I can square root this, square root this. Okay. And the uh, square root of um, K over M is equal to omega, right? Okay. So this gives me a general equation. Uh, when the x is equal to zero, what does that mean? V is equal to omega a. That's the maximum velocity, right, when, you, when the displacement is zero. Well, that makes sense because remember omega a was uh, whatever was in front of the cosine, right? Remember the equation of velocity as a function of t was... Uh, omega a cosine of omega t plus phi, whatever is in front of the cosine is the maximum velocity. So this equation makes sense. But this equation is a relationship that is connecting the velocity with the displacement, uh, with the position of the uh, block. So it's in a different format. Now, when the x is equal to a, what's the velocity? Then the velocity is zero, right? Okay, so using this we can answer different kinds of questions. When is the velocity half of what it, its maximum is? At what position? So whatever, how fast it's going here is omega a, right? Half that velocity, v is equal to omega a over 2, right? That's equal to omega square root of a squared minus x squared. At what position is the velocity half its, velocity, uh, uh, half its maximum velocity? So we have omega a, omega, omega cancel, square both sides. Oh, well, we got rid of the square root, right? Omega's cancel. And then I have x squared comes over here. a squared minus a squared over 4. That's equal to uh, 4 fourths. Minus one fourth is three fourths a squared, right? So x is equal to what? Square root of three over two a. Okay, square root of three over two a, that's gonna be point eight six six a, right? So the velocity here is whatever it is, by the time it's about 86%, so that would be, let's use the other marker here, uh, that would be about this position here. So if this is the maximum, 86% is closer to the maximum, and then closer here. The velocity is half of omega a. That means mainly it's going fast here, very, very fast. And then towards the ends is where most of the slowing down takes place. Towards the ends is where most of the slowing down takes place on the left and the right. Okay, how about this question? What's the velocity at half the displacement? Right, so over here, what's the velocity at half? Okay. Well, then you put here x equals a half a.
x is equal to half a, and then you solve v equals omega square root of, and then you square that, you get a squared over 4, and then now you're going to get 4 fourths minus uh, 1 fourths is 3 fourths a squared, square root of 3 over 2 omega a, v is equal to square root of 3 over 2 v max which is 0.866, right? So at half the displacement, the velocity is 86% of its maximum value here, and at 86% of the displacement, the velocity is half, okay? So you can kind of see that relationship. Okay, so now this is the theory behind oscillatory motion, the, the equations, and all of that that we developed. Let's do a couple examples with this next. Thank you.